Do you want me to touch her? inside the root roost. We also call this the museum. Uh, in the museum, all the artifacts that are inside the museum are all 100% from the grounds of Vulture City. Um, so these items have a lot of attachments. We have a pair of baby shoes and one of the cabinets over here that admits their own EMF. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, uh, but it does happen sometimes. Later in the evening, if you guys want to pull them out and see if we can get some activity off of it, I'd be more than happy to bring those does out. That, does that usually happen like, when you put them on? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Only after midnight. <laughs> artifacts all from Vulture City so we have a lot of things in here that are unidentified that possibly could be admitting their own you know uh, energy or have some type of attachment um, this is one of the buildings that I spend a lot of time in um, I can tell you that for me this is probably one of the most active buildings on the property uh, it was an old miners cabin back in the day um, the previous owner of Vulture City the caretaker actually lived in this actual building itself so him and his wife stayed here um, so are we getting kind of residual energy from that? Did they die or, here? Or? No, they didn't. Okay. Um, but I'm just wondering if there's just not, are we getting that from the mine side? There's just so many different elements happening at Vulture City, well, which makes it, you know, kind of being confusing for the best of us in this field to really kind of like, what is it coming from? Is it coming because the mine's still active? Or is it coming from the artifacts to the combination? Is it a collective type haunting? What is it, you know? Approximately 14 miles south of Wickenburg, Arizona, sits a historic town of Vulture City, a town offering a glimpse of a lost era. In 1863, Henry Wickenburg, a prospector from Austria, started to work on a dry claim that would become known as the Vulture Mine. As work began, they started to find gold-bearing samples and word quickly spread. By the 1880s, the town population exploded to over 5,000. With growing success at the mine, Vulture City soon had a saloon, a bunkhouse, a brothel, a doctor's office, and a state office, and much more. Vulture City quickly became the largest and fastest producing gold mine in Arizona and would fund the growth of Phoenix itself. With growing fortune, the town began to fall victim to bandits, Indians, its own administration, and even the United States Army. The cavalry would eventually be run out of town. The town would establish its own vigilante committee to combat the murders, rapes, and hybrid. With nothing around for miles and miles, this town is truly frozen in time a very active mine over there. Yeah, very much so. So they, they run pretty much 24-7 for the past two years that we've been here. So Gold coming some, out of there? To, to my understanding, quite a bit, yes. So, so there's potential, too, that the spirits that are here may still want that gold. Absolutely. I mean, and you have, like, that's what this town was built upon. It was built upon gold. It was built upon the fact that, you know, the, this, is a, this is a place to, to, to make a living and to raise a family, you know, and get that money. And uh, I think that some of them still are here and they're still living out their day as they would have in the, the late 1800s, early 1900s. That's crazy. Oh, wow. The feeling in here is holy crap, man. Oh, that feeling in here. All right. So this is the brothel, right? Yeah. So we're in the brothel right now. Um, I guess we can call this the madam's quarters. Uh, a lot of stuff has gone down in here anywhere from we had industrial lighting set up on the stove. One evening we were having an overnight lockdown. 
And uh, there was a, a young teenager actually that was here with his mother who captured it on video, but something picked it up off this stove and it got thrown right here in the middle of the floor. So they like to throw things in this room. In this room, yeah. For That's sure. awesome. This doll right here, um, if you have a K2 meter, uh, I would recommend putting it up to her. You'll see that she admits her own energy when things start picking up in here. Um, and that's that doll right there. So we're just gonna try this right now. Let's see what happens. Come on, you wanna light it up for us? No? That's so all right. This doll right here, this is one that brings a lot of like energy. I'm not sure why, if there's an attachment, I have no idea. Um, I was in here about two weeks ago and I was filming and I had asked if the spirits in here realized that they have that they, they died, that they passed on. Um, and then we heard a big bang at the glass back here in the kitchen. And I didn't know I had caught an audio piece, but I remember this is an instant playback. And when I did the playback, it said, I'm dead. So I can give you an instance. We were doing an investigation here. My audio guy was in here. And we had some unexperienced team members back here in this room. I walk in. They're talking loud. And I walk in. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, guys. And I'm like, what are you doing? You're like, why are we talking so loud? And uh, my audio guy had ended up stopping the recorder right after that and, and rewinded it back. And right behind my voice, there was a male voice copying what I said. And he said, Jesus Christ. Back here, I have a lot of psychic sensitive medians that tell me that there's a baby garden behind here. And I mean that as a shallow grave of a lot of children that were buried here. Uh, from abortions that were taking place inside the doctor's office. It's said that this doctor wasn't very friendly, that this doctor might have been a little bit kind of office rocker a little bit. Um, he would sway minors and uh, buy them food and whatnot, and the next thing you know, they'd get sick. Well, he left a, a trail of sick and dead people from here to Wickenburg to Dewey. His last known about spot is in uh, Napa Valley at the uh, Insane Asylum Cemetery. Um, so with that being said, and what I've heard from psychics and sensitives, that he wasn't a very nice guy. Um, and that some of these babies, these children were buried back here in this area. Now, do I know that for a fact? I don't know that for a fact. Um, that's just going based upon what I've heard from many people who didn't even know the stories. So, and that would be this area. And it's kind of weird because some people who have told me this did remote readings to this place and they didn't even know the layout. So they wouldn't even have known that this is like a squared out box, that we have these, these cactus going this way in this formation. It does seem as if something might, you know, have been in here, like there might have been a reason for it. And, and for all we know, there could have been grave markers. Um, we just don't have anything historically that we can base that upon uh, as fact, but I would love to know. I mean, because if they are here, um, I'd love to honor them in their lives, you know, and, and make sure that they did have headstones. Yeah, um, and they say a lot of kids died here that from uh, the influenza too. 1918, influenza ran through here, killed a ton of people. That's why we have the cemetery right down the road from here, which the majority of those uh, markers are that of the influenza. And it was said that one of the nurses here actually contracted the influenza, and she was told to stay indoors and to not go out, much like we have now with the COVID, right? Um, she refused to do so. She went to the cookhouse. From the cookhouse, she spread influenza supposedly through the entire town. Wow. Yeah. So one, one nurse mistake. killed the one entire person. town. Yeah, that, that's what rumor says. So that's incredible. It's pretty crazy. This right here, guys. This tree right here. Eighteen people lost their lives, and from what I have been told, they were hung around their necks on their tippy toes until they couldn't breathe anymore, still feeling the ground beneath them. So Jay. Is it true that 18 people truly were hung here? We know, verify that there was 18 people that were hung from this tree. Um, one of those hangings, to give you a connection between this and the Asse office, was that they, they had noticed that gold was missing in the Asse office. For three days, they kind of tracked down who this person was. They finally found him. And within five minutes, they had drug him from the Asse office out here across the courtyard, hung him and killed him on the street. So the rumors about vigilante juries basically are true it's it very much so true out here the 18 deaths were all chummed up to thievery 
um, stealing of gold, things of that nature. So that was a, that was a big deal here, and these miners didn't tolerate it. So if you were caught doing that, you could find your way on the street. Now there is there are stories that there might be more than 18. We know documented that there is 18 people that were hung from the street. What I do know from history as well that these people weren't really well respected in the community after this happened. So sometimes these people might just be cut down from this rope and just thrown out here. A good Samaritan might come by and decide to bury them down in the cemetery, or an animal could just drag them off. You never knew what was really going to happen with some of these people because they weren't really well respected, respected. after doing Is that. it also true that people that weren't respected in this town were shot dead and buried where they lay? Um, we hear a lot of that Old West type stuff, you know, that they were shot dead. Um, I don't have any like documentation that's going to show you that yeah, they were shot dead buried there. There is a plot behind the Wells Fargo building that we found recently um, of a of lonely grave that's sitting there. So it kind of like makes you wonder, is that one of those people? So we could be walking on a grave right now. No, very and not much even so, knowing. absolutely, especially that's, in Vulture City. So guys, all over this town, there's potential that we could be walking on the graves of people from children to grown men who literally died and then were buried where they died. Talk about energy. This place has it. As Jay has told me already, this place is a paranormal Disneyland. And tonight, we're gonna investigate these different places and find out if it's truly paranormal or if it's a hoax. Entry into the Asse office. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we're gonna head in here. This place right here, EVPs. People have been literally pushed down the stairs. There are so many reports of physical violence right here in this building. You can literally smell the history when you walk in here. I don't know if you notice that throughout all the other buildings you walk in here. It's just got that strong, musky, like, smell to it that not all the other buildings have. That's recent, too. That's not something that's been here the two years I've been here. This is within the past six months. That's crazy. So, guys, it's starting to get dark out here right now. And uh, this is the prime time to be here. And hopefully we can catch something while we're interviewing with Jay. So this is where they literally processed the gold over here in that last room we were in, and they molded down into bars. Um, this is kind of a, <clears throat> a multi-purpose um, building, if you will. So they were able to kind of process everything through each one of these rooms. They lived on site. They had their own office here. Um, That's crazy right now. We're walking now into the, um, the vault. All right. That's what I'm talking about. So... This, this is it. This is where they held all the gold. Oh, this is fantastic. So, right here, guys, this is where they held all the gold. Right here, people would literally defend this and try to steal it. I'm going to go down into this hole right now. And uh, I'm also going to check. So they had a report of a rattle down here. So I want to just keep an eye out for a rattlesnake and make sure I'm safe. She's braver than me. <laughs> I've never been down here. I refuse to. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So guys, down here there is gold. They have gold bars down here. And you can kind of see them. And it's pretty awesome. Check that out. They have gold bars down here. And that right there is enough to create that kind of energy. They're replicas, but, uh, you know, just putting these bars down here is enough to kind of incite some activity, especially if there's someone down here who's protecting this. And uh, this pit, it's just like, imagine coming and looking up into this pit here. And uh, this is where they kept all this gold. So if you guys, if you, uh, if you see up here, we have, uh, You're still recording? Yeah. we have, uh, that landing right there, which is the second store where they would actually sleep, um, in the property. So if you manage to make it through the door and these four foot walls, um, by the time you got here, there would have been a rail cart or something that would have gone over the top of this. Uh, they already have you covered in an upright position. You're pretty much already in a bad situation. So you're, you're not going to get the gold. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it was strategically thought out. There's a reason why the building's four foot thick. You know, it has all these little outcroppings in the walls and areas for them to kind of look and monitor it. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is the vault. It's pretty so, thick in here. From what I understand, they had multiple guards in this building too, yeah, right? Yeah, they always had guards in here. They always had a guard watching at least one. Um, and then generally speaking, they would be up over in this uh, upstairs area. 
and they'd be looking out the window overseeing the mine. The feelings that women um, and, and people get inside this building, they get a sense of, um, you know, being uh, not alone, you know, when they should be feeling, you know, uh, much so alone, they feel like being watched. Um, they almost feel as if, like, someone's following them throughout the building. I know we've captured, as my team is testing you here, something very intelligent here that will call us by our own names. Wow. So it will, it will duplicate our names. So if I'm calling out for one of my crew members, like, hey, Damien, it will say Damien, like on our record. We were catching this a lot. So um, it knows that you're here. It's very well aware. So even in death, oh, wow. I'm I mean, chills the security right now. is still much so I just alive. got, like, really cold right here. Do you feel that? No, the, the place is weird. It's got cold spots in throughout. I like. I was so, standing here and I was warm, and yeah, all of a sudden I just I'm sweating look. Moments. My hairs are literally standing up yeah, on end right now. Yeah, That's yeah, crazy. Months, yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I have to ask you a question then. Sure. If it doesn't like women, mm -hmm. do you think it's a good idea that I stay in here by myself tonight? I wouldn't say it's a good idea, but you did sign the waiver, so. <laughs> all right. So I definitely need to do it. <laughs> you, you, you should do it. You should see what happens. It'd be interesting to see. We have not yet had a woman uh, brave enough to stay in here for a long duration of time um, by herself. The upstairs is where, um, you know, the, uh, allegedly an investigator was attacked, punched in the face, thrown down the stairs. Um, but probably nine out of ten women that we come through in the day tours and they do their self-guided tour around the town, they, they come back and they'll, if they're talking to us, like, there's something weird about that two-story building, you know, like, I just felt creepy and I heard noises. I felt like someone was following me. But we get that a lot. It's usually women that say that. Um, so we get door slams in here, loud bangs. This is, you know, you got a question, like, is it paranormal, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but this is the place that we're looking for ghosts that uh, you should be. Awesome. So uh, let's head up there then. <laughs> right. If they don't like me, let's do it. <laughs> so you would have had security here. Hey, well, this, this is the glory hole right back here. So before that hill wasn't there, you would have been able to see very clearly um, into that pit. Um, so this would have been a great vantage point for security at night. Plus, obviously, right over here is the vault. So right. you can look down on that. Back here, you're able to see right in front of the hanging tree at the back door. So they had pretty much a good vantage point of everything going on in the town for a reason. Because they needed to make sure they knew what was happening at all times. So they literally shot people from right here. Talk about some energy, right? You talk about places where shootings, mass murder, mass executions happen. This right here is the place it happened from. The men who pulled the trigger were on this floor. So in many cases, a lot of people died at the hands of the people in this room. And you talk about violence and the fact that people up here have been pushed, shoved, hit. This is the place where it happened. So if you're in here with us tonight, I encourage you to push me. I encourage you to shove me. Let's find out if it's truly paranormal or if it's a hoax. Yeah, so I would just say, like, be careful in here because the place is like, uh, it's, uh, this place is different, man, than the rest of the place. It's newly restored. Um, and with that, I think it's brought about a newfound energy. Um, this stuff was not like this before. Um, they just recently redid all of this and even the staging. Um, and certain something we know about paranormal activity certainly is anytime you begin renovating or making changes, it can certainly upset or alter the atmosphere and, and spirits in general. Entities that are here certainly pick up on that and they either can be happy or unhappy about that. And like I said, I've been up here a lot of times, guys, and I'm not just trying to throw shade and bullshit, but like it does feel different tonight than most nights. We usually have lighting in here, which is not in here tonight. I don't know if that's part of it, but it's definitely a, a thicker um, feeling than normal in here. So just be careful when you're in here. Yeah. So if there is anyone up here with us, I would certainly like you tonight to leave something here on this table, maybe. Maybe move something that's here so we can get it on camera. We have a camera set up right here, so if you're in here, I would love for you to move something on this table for us. Move one of these pots and pans. I really like to eat. So if you could cook for me, that would be great. I'm really hungry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is creepy. This is awesome. Right. This is fucking fantastic. This is, like, this is the creepiest I've seen it. I'll be completely honest with you. I think because now that it's whoa, staged now. Whoa. Whoa. What was that? Did you catch that, Steve? Well, we'll just move it. I heard a big okay, you heard something, yeah. and I saw a shadow. Okay. 
I'm gonna have to check the video. I literally was starting to turn and I saw a shadow and you heard something. Yeah, I heard like a, like a, like a I don't know, like, I don't know if it was something that dropped or like a vibration. But that was freaking. It sounded like it came from over here. Yeah, and it was bright as I was getting ready to look out over here too. That, and that's interesting that you say that because uh, we recently had some people here investigating, and I was at the roost, um, and I was coming back down the hill, and not in this vault room, but at the very end, uh, there uh, was somebody looking out the window, um, and you could you could see them like peeking down, looking out the window. So I thought these people that were investigating. We're kind of like not really following the rules of the town so i was coming down here to kind of like you know get them out and by the time i got halfway downtown um they started running out of the brothel screaming that a dress had moved in the brothel so i knew that they weren't in here um on a tour i did a female captured what appeared to be um, a man looking through that same window it's the second window if you're looking from it uh, on this side of the building awesome. to the left awesome. so so if that was you and you're in here we're gonna leave, and I'm gonna come back later tonight. Jay said no female has ever come up here for an extended amount of time by herself. So I'm gonna be the first. I'm gonna come up here tonight, and it's gonna be you and I, and we're gonna do this. So if you're here, I'd love for you to move something for me. Go ahead, sorry. So the church house is right behind the cookhouse here. It's the one that's kind of out of sorts. It's kind of got the white siding on it. Um, that was originally, uh, it was here on the property and moved to Wickenburg and it sat outside of a church for many years. It was just recently donated back within less than a year. Um, reports in there are, you hear hymns, which is strange because that wasn't what it was used for. That was what it was used for at the church. So we get like reports of hymns being um, sung in there. Um, and there's a little girl that frequents this town that follows my wife and I home a lot. Her name is Izzy. So if you call upon Izzy... Izzy is a little girl here. She's a young girl. Her mom's here. She's not lost. Um, she likes to communicate. She will touch you. She will use the devices to communicate. Um, she comes through a lot in that church house. All right, guys. So the sun has set out here at the Vulture Mine. We're in Vulture City, and we are going to do a three-part investigation here. We're going to do the assay office, and never in the history of investigating this place has a female ever gone upstairs by herself i'm gonna do that tonight and we're gonna find out if we can get the activity that they talk about we're gonna find out if that's truly paranormal then we're gonna move on to the brothel slash doctor's office we're gonna investigate there there have been reports of the dress moving voices being heard evps things flying the doll in there giving off its own EMF reading. We're gonna go in there and investigate that. And then we're gonna move on from there to the hanging tree and the church. We have a static cam set up in the church right now. And the report is that Izzy will come in there and will talk, will touch, will interact with you intelligently. So we have multiple buildings here where they talk about intelligent responses. So we're gonna start off here and we're gonna go check it out and find out if this place is truly paranormal or if it's a hoax. I stole gold. I need to be punished. Can you come punish me? I stole gold. I need to be punished. Whoa, the EMF detector just fight to 100. A hundred. How many lost souls? Are they around here? They hanging out in here? Big. This is crazy. If you're uh, if you've been hung here, I'm so sorry. You're gonna have to stay. But uh, I see the news. I think I need to pay for what I've done. Is there any gold around here?
Can you, uh... Can you get the jury? Am I going to receive a punishment? Oh, oh shit. Fuck me. <laughs> okay, so this just popped up. Two words in a row. Received, when I said am I going to receive a punishment, and more. Oh, more. Am I going to get more of a punishment? Wow. Is this the spot? Right here. There's like a hot spot right here. If you are hung on this tree, can you come and make a noise for us? So 18 men lost their life right here. And just, here's part of the news, guys. Imagine this news being around your neck and you're on your tippy toes and you're, and you're trying to breathe and you can't. And that, that's just, you feel the ground beneath your feet and you literally cannot Get that breath of air. You know, it brings a whole new aspect to, 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 to losing that life and, and still being connected to this earth. Even as you die, you can feel the earth beneath you. And that, I mean, just incredible. I can't imagine that pain. So we just came up to the main building here where they welcome guests in. And we're gonna do a session with Jay after not getting any activity tonight, we're really starting to wonder if this place is a hoax. But the one thing we did find out is that this house up on the hill, no one has lived in that house for 30 years and the lights just came on. Jay has said that in all the time that he's been here, no one's lived in that house. There's never been lights on in that house. And Jay just told us that there are lights on. So we're gonna set up and do this session with Jay and just see what happens here. Um, they said they've been getting activity on this end all night long. I'm gonna be running an echo on it so it's gonna repeat the words repeatedly, um, which just helps us to better understand what it's saying. Now I'm gonna talk with him like I talk with him on a regular. Hello? Who is that? These are my new friends. Who do, I, who do I have here tonight? Evidence. I want evidence. Yes. How many people are in the room right now? King. Izzy, that's you. How are you doing, Izzy? Oh, 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 oh. I heard the little girl come through, guys. Can you speak one at a time? I'd really like to talk to Izzy right now.
No. Can you tell me about the house that's on the hill with the lights in it right now? Does anyone know about the lights in that house right now? Why are the lights on? Your house? No, Izzy, that's not my house. Was that your house at one point? No. No. Now that you know we're friends with Jay, will you come out and see us? Bill, I know that you come here a lot. Does that device at the very end of this table, if you come up to that device and light it up to a red so I know you're inside the room with us, I'd really appreciate it. The one at the very end, closest to the door. If Bill's not here, is there any minors that are here right now? Tom? Izzy, what about the spirits? The spirits are here? Can you bang on something or, or shut a door so we know that you're here? <clears throat> what about the doll? Are you talking about the doll that's in here? Can you make that doll play music? Hug me. Holy shit. Demon dead. See, when you start talking about the malevolent spirit, a lot of this weird shit comes through, like demons, like... All the shit. What about the doll? You said to hug the doll? Don't touch it, bro. Oh, fuck. I just barely... You guys hear the shit? What? Wait, is that coming from that? What's that music, man? Wait, is it coming from that? Yeah, it's coming from that. Guys, there is music coming from the doll, and it just said doll. Hug me. Hug me. Let me get in there, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Holy shit. Can you do that again for me? Grab my EMF detector. So, so it just said doll. You heard music from there, right? I'm not fucking listening. Yeah, it just came straight up. Ooh, fuck. That was insane. There was just music coming from this doll, Steve. I, no, I just came over with a recorder. Uh, I don't think it's got a music thing in there. Izzy, was this your doll? Were you playing on the doll? Were you playing with your doll? Your doll? That's the first time I've heard that do that. I've heard it does that. I've just never heard it do that. Can I touch it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah your own wrist. <laughs> but yeah. What the fuck is that open? Oh, that's a blanket. Oh, okay. I actually don't want to touch it. Yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, we don't know. I went to go touch the doll, all the fucking music started playing as a doll. Yeah, I heard it. I, heard oh, it. I was sitting right there in that chair back there. That's never happened before. No. <laughs> like, dude, well, I was like, uh, I, just, I don't know if you heard me, I was sitting back there, I said, you hear that music playing? So you heard the doll too? Yes, I heard it clear. Oh, wow. Was that you? Busy. are you glad we hugged the doll? We, we, we.
So we're coming down to the schoolhouse with uh, Jay and company from Vulture Mind Paranormal to see what happens down here. And we brought Izzy's favorite toy. Izzy, that's you immediately. That's awesome. Izzy, did you follow us from the, um, the roost, the museum? Hello. Izzy, is that you? Izzy, is that you by your dolly? Yeah. Yeah. Can you make it light up for us again if that's you, Izzy? Yeah, light up, Good. exactly. Good. Just like this, Izzy. I know it's weird. Just like that, and it will go off for us. It is so weird, isn't it? Who just told me to get out? I'm not getting out. I'm not getting out. Hey, hey. You're not like my dad? Don't go. 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 Jay, take this. Hit the trigger on my hand. Is that you? It feels really cold. When I first put it on there, it was like 80 something, and then it went up to 91. Sorry, she said. Don't be sorry. Honey. Don't be sorry. Come, you can come hold my hand. Let's play with your doll. Can you come hold my hand and play with your doll? I like to play dolly. It's getting cold again, bro. Hand? Yeah. 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 Come hold my hand. Oh, dude, dude, my hand's getting like ice cold. It's dropping. It just dropped. It, it's to, getting ice cold. It went from 90.3 yeah. to 90. Is that you, Izzy? Yeah, she said. Yeah, oh, hey. Holy shit. How are you? Is this your favorite doll? I love your doll. I think it's very cute. I love you. I love you too. Eighty-eight. We drop down to eighty-eight on your hand. Can you can you come play the music on your dolly? I want to hear it. I don't hear very good, and I would love to hear the music on your dolly. Can you do that for me, Iz? Show me how it works. Oh my God, the fucking your temperature just went down like three, four degrees. My hand's freezing cold. Freezing cold. Oh my, like, my body, I'm like 88.3. My, oh my, my hand is like an icicle, bro. Dude, this is weird. Can you show me how your dolly works, honey? It's staying. <laughs> yeah, Izzy. There it goes. The K2 is like not learning. What? Yeah. Can you light up your dolly for me? I know this is where you like to hang out. I'm a friend of Jay's. I'm safe. I promise I won't hurt you. That's good. Izzy, don't be afraid. We just want to talk with you. We think so, it's really cool. So my hands start to warm up now. Yeah. 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 Like she's not here now. 
Like my hand is getting warm again. It's getting hot. Yeah, you're back up to 91.6. Wow. That's an incredible right there. So guys, my oh, shit. That's going on. My hand literally got ice cold. And Jay has my thermometer and said that the temperature on my hand dropped by several degrees. This is just incredible right here. I, I've never seen anything like it. Wow. Izzy, it's okay to play with it. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. Izzy, will you show me how your dolly works? Izzy, can you make that, that music box inside the dolly go off? If you can make that music go off in the dolly, Izzy, we'll leave you alone for the night. I just would really appreciate it if I could show my friends. Her, Why do you want me to touch her? Do you want me to touch her? You keep saying touch her. Oh, shit. Whoa. You got that, right? Whoa. I got that. I got that. I got that. As soon as I touched her. That was crazy. Y'all see that light up? As soon as I touched her, it lit up. Can I touch her? No. This one's just in, yeah, on the box. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! That's awful. Oh! Are you drawing off my energy right now? Can you make her run? What's her right now? That fucker starts running, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> I'll chase her. It's called you a slut. <laughs> it did, I'm just telling you. <laughs> Hey, that one by you go is going off crazy too. Holy crap, all of them. He said it called me a slut. Whoa. It is again. And again, it keeps calling me a slut. Hey, can you make can you make this go off? That's crazy. All of them going off. No one's running, no one's scared of you. Come on, you gotta do more than that to make us run. Do something to make us run. Slam a door. The link. Make the dog link. I'll probably run from that shit, too. I hate fucking dogs. <laughs> and after what happened with this fucker earlier, I'm never touching this in a new project. Oh, my God. Can the slut touch you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can the slut touch you? Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah, we believe in ghosts. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling really funny right now. That's the spot. Yeah. This is where, where you're standing is where I stand um, during tours. And like, I get so sick right there sometimes. I feel so nauseous right yeah, now. Like, I, like, I, like, I, yeah. yeah, like I'm like, wow. This is about like 75 away through my tour. So like by this time I'm already kind of feeling like crap. But as soon as I go up there and start doing a demonstration for Izzy, because we'll bring a rocking horse. Like right here? All kinds of shit. Bro. Yeah, I... That's crazy. Die. 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 Are you trying to kill me? Word. 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 Oh, shit. Hi, Izzy. Hey, girly. She's talking to the, she's like yelling to the speaker, dude. Hi, girly. Mom. Oh, what the fuck? Do you hear that coming out? Like that hackling shit coming out of the box? Did you hear that? It was like. You didn't hear that? I Can I brush her? Your dolly's hair. Who did she? Who did she? Can you pick up the doll? <laughs> Can you make the doll move for us? I touched the dog. Be very cautious. You don't know what you're playing with. 
it did it for you. Izzy, do you like playing with me? Do you think I'm nice? Do you want to play? I'll give you some of my energy. Can you come show me how your doll works? Well, it's lighting up again. If you're here with us, touch, touch, touch. Izzy, saying touch. I'm touching it, Izzy. Can you make it make noise for me? Okay, just like a personal note, like I was reading that doll was a baseline of a 77. It's now an 82. Oh, wow. That's, That's crazy. four degrees hotter. Izzy, the story with Izzy is, is that about probably two months ago, um, I was in my house, and I'll tell the story why this is all going and see if the response would happen. And my wife had, uh, she had fallen asleep on, on the couch in the living room. We have a two-story house. And uh, my cat was meowing, and it, was, it wouldn't shut up. It's my son's cat. So I yell up to my son. I say, hey, open the door, let the cat in, for God's sake. I'm tired of hearing him meow. Long story short, I keep yelling at him to do this. I walk up the landing, and I look, his door shut. And I'm like, that's why he didn't hear me. I start hearing a little girl um, talking to my cat, saying, hey, pretty little kitty. Hi, kitty. Hey, kitty, kitty, kitty. And on all this crap, right? And I'm like, oh my God, like I only have like my son upstairs. So I went downstairs, I sat down and I'm still hearing it. About five minutes later, my wife wakes up and she says, hey, you wanna go upstairs and go to bed? And I'm like, uh, no, I think I'm good. You know, so uh, the next morning I tell her what happened and she says, oh yeah, that's Izzy. She followed me home from Vulture City. She's been talking to me a lot lately. And I'm like, well, when the hell were you going to tell me that? <laughs> so, Izzy, that's the story behind Izzy in my house. Um, but it, it's weird because, like, she shows up a lot in my house. So she goes back and forth with you from Yeah, work. yeah. <clears throat> Marie, Marie. Marie, yeah, that's my wife's name. Wow. Hey, Izzy, can you move this doll for us? So guys, that was incredible. The experience we just got out of the church here was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. I mean, that was, I mean, I've never experienced anything like that. So we're going to uh, move back over to the estate office in the brothel and just see, do one last session over here and see if we get anything. Now that the activity here is starting to pick up at the Vulture City Mines. Any of the old Asse officers or workers in here tonight? What about the mine? It's tweaking out. So I can just walk that, into the vault and just grab some gold? That's cool. That's okay? Is that you coming to mess with the food? Why would it be dumb if we went in there? Can you knock this food off the table for me? Well, you guys obviously aren't here. You're not making any noises. So I guess that means the gold's free tonight. So if I don't hear you, I can't hear you walking around. I can't hear you in this building. That means the gold's free. Hey, Jay, let's go take it, man. USA. <laughs> Whoa. How interesting. Are you talking about me? Are you watching me right now? 
I used to work for the USA. Said you. Me? Yeah, in the box in there. Did it really? It said you, you, for answering your question. So you, you know I'm coming for your gold, right? I'm just watching for that rattlesnake. I'm gonna take your gold bars. I got it. Game. Game. Are we playing a game with you? Do you know that we're playing with you? Holy shit. Or are they playing with us? That's a good question. Are you up there watching me? Getting that really tough fight like earlier when you and I were in here and getting those like chill bumps and shit. It got like really fucking cold in here, dude. To me, I mean, I'm feeling really cold. What was that? No, that no. was me. Okay. All right, guys, we're debunking that. That was me. All right, so I just went down there and took some of your gold. I took it all. Validating what we're even talking about. So that's crazy. Need. Need. Yeah, we need it. We want to be rich. See, the thing about the Ase I've always said about this place, it's like I know there's something here. I just, I've not freaking seen, I've felt it. I know it's there. But like the, these fuckers in here are smart, dude. They're not stupid, and they're not about to play a fucking game, just like they said right yeah. here, right? So I don't know what it is you gotta do to freaking get them to freaking come out and then actually freaking show themselves. I imagine if they do come out, it shows itself as like that. that the investigator said he got his ass beat. You know, he push, he keep pushing, he keep pushing to the point to where they finally break, and then when they do lash out, it's violent. Interesting. Well, let's push the envelope. Y'all stay down here. Kim and I go upstairs. I'll run the box down here and tell you what's going on. Yeah. Kim's, Kim's here as work. She can hear from up there. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah. Do you need to bring the anything? Just bring that. This? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Let's just, let's see what happens. If you push Kim right now, we will leave. I've been waiting all night for you. Can you say Kim's name? Is that you? All right, well, push me. Is one of your guys' name Kim? Yes! Holy crap. So hey, Jay? Pushing Kim or something? Yes. yes. What did it just say? Something about pushing and then it said Kim. Kim. I just said if you push Kim, we'll leave. Oh, I didn't even know they fucking said that. So that's sorry. what we said up here. Well, there you go. And that's what it said down there? Just stay away from the windows, yeah. please. Yeah, got it. All right, well, push me. So we've concluded our investigation here at the Vulture City Mines. And there is certainly no question that there is paranormal activity happening here, guys. From dolls making music to voices through Echo Vox and Obuluses, rocks being thrown tonight at members of the Vulture Mine crew. This has been a night for sure that we can certainly say without a shadow of a doubt that Vulture City Mines is paranormal and it is certainly not a hoax. With that said, we will certainly come back. A town that was built on gold, murder, rape, and death has left us blown away tonight. The Vulture City Mines is here 
it's alive and there is definitely still a place that is very active with activity.